Hey, this is Ub Vargas, and this is a beginner's guide on how to set up Retro Pi 3.1 on Raspberry Pi. So first, let's talk about the hardware that you'll need. You'll need a Raspberry Pi. I recommend the Raspberry Pi 2 as it runs the best. And you can get a thing called the Canna Kit on Amazon.com that has all of the hardware that you'll need. I prefer to keep my Raspberry Pi in a case, so I pulled out the 3D printer and made this uh, old Nintendo case for my Raspberry Pi. But I'm guessing most of you don't have 3D printers, which is fine. You can get a Lego case all set up and put it together yourself. It works pretty well as well. And you're going to want a power supply for your Raspberry Pi. I recommend 5 volts, 2 amps, so you have sufficient power. And it's a micro USB cable, which that's not my... There it is. A micro USB cable. And... You're going to want some way to connect it to the internet, so you're going to want a uh, Ethernet cable or um, Wi-Fi dongle, and then you're going to want a micro US or a micro SD card. I use the SanDisk Ultra 32 gigabyte, but you can use any micro SD card that's above four gigabytes um, that's compatible with Raspberry Pi. And there's lists online showing you which things are which. SD cards are compatible. You're also going to want a SD card reader so that you can install the operating system on your uh, from your laptop. And then you're going to want some way to connect video uh, to your TV. I would recommend an HDMI cable, but you can also use a 3.5 millimeter jack RCA cable. But the sound quality isn't very good without an extra sound card, so I would stick with the HDMI cable if you can. And then you're going to want a game control pad. I've got a Super Nintendo USB controller, but I also have a Logitech F310 controller, which works pretty well as well. And then you can also get a wireless USB keyboard or a USB keyboard to configure stuff through the terminal, but that may not be necessary. If you want to connect over SSH, you can do that, and you won't necessarily need a keyboard. So those are all of the hardware that you'll need in order to set up your Raspberry Pi. So let's go to the software that you'll need. All right, so now you get your software. So you go to blog.petrockblog.com slash RetroPi, and then you can go to the downloads page. And currently it is RetroPi 3.1. So you pick the image that corresponds to the Raspberry Pi you have, which is Raspberry Pi 2 in my case. And by the way, feel free to donate to the project if you feel like it's been beneficial to you. It helps us developers out uh, so we can provide better improvements in the future. So you do standard download. And by the way, we just added Berry Boot downloads as well. So you'll select the standard download and it will download a .gz file. And also, by the way, this is a link to a wiki page for first installations, and it goes you goes through the list of what you need, um, pretty much everything on this video. So if I miss something, this is a quick way to check what uh, is there. Um, so you, once you've downloaded your SD image, it will be a .gz file, and then you're going to want to download uh, 7-zip to extract the .gz GZ file into the .amg file, which you'll put onto your micro SD card. So right click, 7-zip, extract here, and then uh, press yes, but I've already extracted it. And then in order to put the images on, your, or the image onto your micro SD card, you're gonna want a program called Win32 Disk Imager. If you're on an Apple product, you'll probably want to use Apple Pie Baker. And so you download that and then you will right click on it and run it as an administrator. So yes, and then you're going to want to make sure that it is the device you have plugged in. And by the way, you're gonna to want to plug in your micro SD card with your micro SD card reader if you haven't done that already. And so I'm gonna just verify, yes, that is my micro SD card, because otherwise you might overwrite your whole external hard drive if you have another one. So make sure you get the right drive letter. So, You'll click on that and open up the uh, RetroPie 3.1 RPI2 image. Click open, and then you're going to click write, and that will write the image to your micro SD card. And that, I've already done that, so I'm going to skip that step. And then you should be good to go for uh, actually setting 
your Raspberry Pi up and booting it up for the first time. So we will go to that now. All right, so the first time that you boot up your Raspberry Pi, this is what you'll see. And so once you've got your gamepad detected, you'll hold down a button and configure your controller. So D-pad up, down, left, right, start, select, A, B, X, Y, and then I'm using a Super Nintendo controller, so left bottom is the top left trigger and the top right trigger. And I don't have any of these buttons because it's a Super Nintendo controller, so I'm just going to hold down the button to skip. So holding down all the way to the end. And it'll be a lot quicker if you've got all these buttons on your controller. But it's a lot faster than it used to be because before it was like two seconds and now it's only one. So that's nice. Right, so if you've used the RetroPie before, you'll recognize that this is a different theme. And this is the carbon theme that Rukovic did, and it looks really nice. And the benefit to this one is that there's no white screen of death type issue, so that's really nice. So you can have all the systems on here with no problems. Um, so first thing you're going to want to do when you set up uh, your first build is you're going to want to go into the RetroPie menu. And in my case, I want to configure my Wi-Fi first, since I have a Wi-Fi dongle, but if you don't have a Wi-Fi dongle, then you can just skip this step, because it will just work over Ethernet. Um, so, I'm going to connect to the Wi-Fi network, and then select my network, type in the password, and then give it a second to think about it. And then, good, we're connected. So the next thing you're going to want to do is go into the Raspi config option. And then we'll select that. And then, I'm sorry that you can't really see on my camera. It's really bad quality. I need to get myself a capture card, but I don't have one of those yet. So we will expand the file system. And we'll press the right button on the d-pad and then press your joypad zero so for this it's a and then right pad again to finish and then yes I would like to reboot and so that's all you need to do and then all you have to do now is just add your ROMs and it will uh, boot up to the systems that you want because by default the systems don't show up unless there's ROMs in their folders so you're going to want to transfer ROMs over, and so I'm going to show you how to do that next, and then you should be good to go and playing games in no time. Alright, so when transferring your ROMs over the network, there are two methods, and I'm going to show you both of them. So we're going to go into computer, and then backslash backslash retropy, and then you'll see right here that there's a BIOS folder and a ROMs folder and configs. So you'll just open the ROMs folder, and then I have a Super Nintendo ROM that I'm going to add. So let's go down to the SNES, and we'll drag it over, and just copy it into there. And so that's very simple. And now when I refresh Emulation Station by pressing F4 or quit, it will refresh. And then it, the Super Nintendo will show up with that game in there. And then the other way is through a program called WinSCP, and there's a link in the description below on how to download that. So we'll open that up, and then we want SFTP, SFTP, and then same all caps, RetroPie, port 22, username Pi, and then the password is just Raspberry, R-A-S-P-B-E-R-R-Y, all lowercase. So save, and then log in, and then update, and then OK. So then we've got home, Pi, RetroPie, ROMs, and then there we are in SNES. And then we'll go into Evfargus and Desktop, and then we can just drag and drop right over and overwrite that. So those are two ways to do it over the network. You can also do it over a USB stick if you don't have a, a network for some reason, if you don't have an Ethernet cable or a micro SD or, a, or one of those Wi Fi dongles. You can do it over USB, which is also described in the first installation. Um, but essentially what you'll do is you'll 
I create a folder called RetroPi, all lowercase, on a USB stick first, plug it into the Raspberry Pi, wait until it finishes blinking, pull it out, plug it back into your computer, and then you'll see that the ROM list will be populated in there, just like this, and then you'll just drag and drop them into their respective lists, um, to the respective folders, and then you'll plug your USB stick right back into the Pi after you transferred your ROMs, and it will automatically upload them. And then once it's done, finish blinking, then it's done. So it's pretty simple, and that's all outlined on the wiki. But that's basically everything you need to do in order to get a basic setup. So then you can check the wiki in the forum for more advanced configurations and other stuff as well. Um, but that's basically all there is to it. So enjoy your retro gaming.